so there's the, this where the sock comes to the rescue so sock typically looks like kind of this where sock collects the logs and uh, you know information from a firewall a proxy server or uh, email server your vpn devices uh, endpoint solutions your edr xdr or your next generation antivirus your critical devices like your uh, database servers web applications all this logs are uh, ingested all these data is ingested on the sock the sock analyst team and the engineers and the security engineers work on that logs try to collaborate it and give the result so it something looks like this there are multiple teams in the in, in the it environment there is this endpoint protection team uh, your you can have your uh, esm server you can have your uh, uh, uh you know antivirus or ngv or a edr solution in, in place uh, which is managed by your epp team you will be having your firewall and your network security team uh, in place you will be having your cloud team in place and and multiple other teams just to just to refer to uh, just to refer it with an example let's say there is an alert generated on a firewall that uh, there is some botnet activity or some dos attack uh, that that has been identified so if it is a botnet activity the the user system is trying to reach some malicious ip address but is it is blocked on the firewall now the alert will be you know passed on to the sock sock will check with the endpoint protection team sock will check the logs from the epp team and try to see what process or what uh, what applications is what application is trying to do this botnet activity or what is the user who is trying which is the user who is trying to do this activity again it it can be something related to this it can be let's say if you are having your cloud team your your uh, some critical servers are facing some dos or ddos attack you want your cloud team is asking you to block those ip addresses on the firewall so again the cloud team will be requiring the uh, assistance of firewall firewall team might not be aware about how the cloud architecture is and this is going to create a uh, mesh kind of topology it it somewhat looks like this where where each team is collaborating and trying to connect with one another for uh, you know res results and only the security information is passed on to sock team and sock team will again check with the uh, if, uh, uh, with the corresponding teams for uh, correlating the data correlating the alerts correlating the uh, incidents and uh, correlating the logs and uh, and forming the incidents and when we talk about the critical part that is the incident part or the alerts part day by day there are so many alerts in 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 uh, that that we see in sock from multiple such teams from end endpoint protection team we are seeing virus outbreak and ransomware alerts uh, and this is actually creating a havoc when when we when we see alerts from endpoint protection solutions or teams when we see fi uh, firewall team is sending so many alerts or uh, my user or team is sending me so many alerts my web server my email servers and cloud team and multi there might be more than only these five teams in the it environment in your network so this is going to create a havoc and this raises to challenges of you know law, lack of correlation uh, when when uh, when in when in when you see in this architecture you see the the sock team is manually going and trying to co uh, correlate the data co correlate the logs from the firewall with the endpoint protection or from the cloud solutions or the cloud security tools with your firewall tools so this correlation with the human intervention is very difficult if in case it is a long weekend or a holiday or uh, uh, or, uh, or if the it team is not available it is or the sock team is not available it is very difficult to you know block that attack again when we talk on uh, the number of alerts we are we are not able to uh, the sock team will not be able to you know uh, reach on or reach or you know close all these alerts because there are a lot of alerts so we we in the sock terms we we call it as raining alerts so with this raining alerts it's very difficult for a sock team to or it's even difficult for a business case to minimize the roi instead of minimizing the roi you are actually uh, just increasing the efficiency of the platform uh, uh, decreasing the efficiency of the platform so it is very much required that we minimize this raining alerts um, correlation should be uh, the factor that we might need to look into limited visibility we need to have a more coverage on all the platforms it can be your cloud it can be your applications and even your flow traffic your streaming traffic uh, 
your it can be your net flow it can be your uh, uh, ip fix it can be any flowing traffic in your in your network again there is a communication gap between the team if if i am a cloud engineer i will not be aware about what things are going on at uh, endpoint protection platforms or or my firewall uh, policies i will not be aware about it so i i am just going to uh, uh, going to those respective teams and this 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 communication channel is not proper i i will not be able to you know elaborate my my problems or my challenges with the team and huge data ingestion is there we we see data from all the branches all the uh, 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 clients customers that has been ingested to the sock which is again of no use similar to draining alerts instead of looking into all of the alerts we we also need to first classify or normalize the data and instead of using the heavy resources which is required for uh, ingesting the used data we can actually utilize or we can actually build up something which is going to be efficient so that's where we uh, that's where this modern sock concept came into picture so the modern sock concept is just the evaluation of an existing sock with uh, imp by improving the efficiency of a sock team we will be discussing on this modern sock strategy and modern sock approach in the following slides and i will be more focused on how we can actually improve the capability and the maturity of your sock how we can actually uh, what kind of strategy we can have for your uh, for for deploying a sock and uh, what is the basic architecture of the sock so i can start with the architecture of the sock so it somewhat looks like this uh, a generic architecture of a modern sock will look like this we we collect the logs we collect the logs from your server we can collect uh, a sock will collect the logs from your server your network devices your application servers or even if you are having some kind of cloud data which uh, which is not feasible to share the logs directly your sock should have uh, uh, an option to to do this api integration for example if you're using uh, some saas applications like office 365 or g suite or something like that so there we can utilize this api integration calls where you can ingest the data to the sock team even the threat management agent if if you are going for an architecture which is agent based architecture so threat management agents are going to work uh, in uh, uh, work work for you to collect the logs and uh, to to fetch the logs from the critical devices and share it to to the analytics server uh, also the modern sock includes this major or the main critical part that is the flow data and the ids data flow data is nothing but your switch data your backbone data or 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 the backbone traffic that i can say and this can actually give you a lot of insights on what activities are happening even if you are uh, if you are using some iot devices like a cctv camera or a printer which is a very basic use case in most of the environment if some attacker is trying to exploit those as well we can we 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 must have uh, you know visibility on that as well the logs that have been generated log flows and the api integration are actually uh, you know are are acting as an ingestion to the sock services sock uh, team sock team can be divided into two parts one will be your analytics and one will be your incident response team analytics uh, for for the analytics part we can actually uh, use a lot of tools and technologies your your tools can include uh, uba nta that is your user behavioral anomalies detection or the uh, network traffic analyzer or even the sim platforms have been used sim can uh, the, the sim is recommended to have uh, we, we we recommend to have you know ai or ml enabled sim which can work 24 by 7 and irregard, regardless of what uh, what the what the data is getting ingested it should it should classify it on their own and uh, work accordingly so the correlation part should happen on the analytics correlation and the analytics part should happen on the sim and the uh, tool with the help of the tools and technologies and a sock personal sock uh, teammate will be there to make sure the rules policies that we have defined are proper to 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 identify that the the alerts have been triggered on on proper basis this uh, analysis of data it will generate or trigger some alerts or some reports which is shared to the incident response team 
the incident response team is now responsible to uh, to look into the alerts of let's say there is this dos or redos attack botnet uh, that has been identified a botnet a botnet alert has been triggered so now your incident response team will analyze all the activities classify it is it a critical thing is it a major thing and after classification of that alert if it is a critical thing then there there needs to there, there needs to be a, a process to be followed a procedure to be followed and we will need to resolve it in let's say within one hour of time or within 15 minutes of time based on the sles that are that are defined so with this criticalness my uh, uh, my uh, uh, my input on this ir team my expectations from an ir team will be your, the ir team will get back to the response uh, get back to the uh, respective team. It can be your firewall team or your endpoint protection team and ask them to maybe block that system or scan that system or maybe block that IP address or whatever the uh, respective action are, the actions are to be taken. During this, uh, this three phase, th these two uh, you know, activities, we also need to maintain a dedicated uh, SLA, SLA of the alerts that are happening. SLAs can be uh, based on the criticality of the triggers criticality or the severity of the triggers. This should also be visible to you. This uh, There should be a customer portal where the alerts and the activities are visible to you. Not only that, your complete reporting, you can, you can, you can uh, see the reports, you can generate the reports and all the log information and the real-time monitoring is visible to you. There, can, there, there needs to be some kind of dashboards which should provide you this kind of things. And the output that a SOC team uh, or, or you should expect from a SOC team is uh, incident notification. As soon as an uh, incident is happening, as soon as an alert has been triggered, you should be updated. You should be, uh, you know, informed uh, by a, uh, via mail, via call, anything. And along with that, what recommended actions are to be taken, you also need to be informed with that. So this is just a generic architecture on how a SOC should be in your environment. It, it can be in your environment. You can, you can uh, if, when you are evaluating a SOC, these, this is the basic structure of a SOC that you need to uh, uh, take care of. So when we talk about the strategy part, uh, SOC usually operates or uh, uses this PPT modules. So PPT is people, process, and tools. Uh, when we talk about people, people uh, uh, in, in this slide, I'm only mentioning the hierarchy, but it is not limited to this. Your people should be your employees, your third parties that are your third parties that have been connecting to the uh, to your IT teams, to your internal teams, or your internal systems, your uh, ingestions with your uh, you know OEM or partners or vendors. All these needs to be taken care of. In this slide, I will be more focusing on the people that are that are responsible for the SOC. So in this, we see CISO. The uh, uh, everyone must be knowing about it. CISO is the Chief Information Security Officer uh, who who manages all these teams. Uh, the SOC manager is the one who you know looks into the complete SOC uh, environment, the security operation center, and reports back to the CISO. So the, uh, the, there are these multiple teams under a SOC manager. It, uh, it, it consists of an analyst team. Analyst team can have multiple roles or based on your environment, you can actually set up, it can be a single role, it can be uh, a single single, uh, single personnel or a single SME who can actually uh, take care of all these things. It can be an alert analyst to identify what alerts are happening to, 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 uh, to make a note of the alerts that are you know, triggered in the environment. There will be a threat analyst, uh, threat intel analyst. So the threat intel analyst work is to uh, identify if any kind of uh, uh, you know new attacks or or if the system is prone to any kind of attack or not. It can be uh, attacks in the organization or attacks outside the organization. Like uh, uh, there is some ransomware attack. Uh, in I, I I am from a manufacturing firm uh, X Y Z and there is another manufacturing from A B C. I'm I'm not having any known uh, attack, but in 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 this ABC firm, there is a new kind of attack, uh, a ransomware attack. 
i'll need to be aware about it uh, aware about it and and what all measures are required i will take i will need to block those ip addresses block those block those processes update my systems update my uh, 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 signature based antivirus solutions so these steps i will need to make sure that i am taking it this inputs will be given by the soc intel analyst team or or the threat hunting team uh, there will be there can be a dedicated malware analyst if you you are planning for uh, l3 level of soc you can have a malware analyst which will actually evaluate all the malwares it uh, they can use uh, tools like sandboxing so sandboxing will give you complete analysis dynamic analysis uh, the static analysis of the file information and what all the file activities are after evaluating it so malware analyst is required uh, if in case you are going for l3 level of soc and you can actually also look in for a forensic analyst so forensic is usually done when the last stage of attack is successful uh, so if you want to if, if your environment is uh, you know uh, prone to ransomware attack and uh, ransomware attack is actually happening in your environment then uh, the ransomware is successful successfully deployed uh, forensic analyst will actually uh, you know look into the logs backtrack the data and identify why what what has happened and what things are uh, wrong or right in the in the nature along with that which things which process or which user or which activity has triggered that activity uh, triggered that uh, incident or the uh, event will also be identified by the forensic forensics analyst team similar to or or i can say parallel to these roles you can also have a separate dedicated team or you can uh, uh, you know uh, you, you can outsource these teams so you can have an incident response team for ir activities you can have threat hunting team for identifying any kind of new attacks in your environment malware engineering team to as uh, the similar role to a malware analyst it will identify if, uh, what all what all things uh, what all damage can a malware can do in your environment and the reverse engineering team so to to uh, identify what an executable file is doing or to do the forensic activity the reverse engineering team can actually help you out along with this hierarchy uh, hierarchy and this structure your employees also play a major role this is this is the part i am not mentioning in this people slide but this is again a important part your employees must be cyber aware you 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 need to make sure your employees are not uh, just just to just to minimize the ir part just to minimize the attack surface it is very much important that you focus on all the people in, including this complete hierarchy structure then there is this process module in the process module we we see this policies and sops which are very important policies are defined to you know uh, to to make sure your business critical activities are taken care of your it can be a business critical activity it can be your client or customer related re uh, uh, requirements it can be regulatory re requirements uh, let's say you are a bank and your of your organization is falling under this rbi regulations or you are a nbfc firm or a, a broking firm and you fall under this sebi regulations so to 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 make sure you are complying to all those things what all required steps are uh, uh, what all required things are there you are specifying it in the policy document uh, you also need to pin down and note down all the critical assets what you want to cover, what you want to onboard on your soc it it can be your critical assets like your firewall your uh, your endpoint protection solutions your uh, uh, erp or your sap doc, uh, uh, sap server your uh, oracle servers database servers applications this you need to Uh, you know have a complete list of policy that uh, these things i will need to add it in uh, or onboard it on the soc you also need to recognize what will be the case studies learned from other organization uh, this abc organization had this ransomware attack and uh, uh, they did not uh, update their endpoint protection solution or they did not update their uh, window systems with with this case studies we will need to uh, set it as an example set it as a base uh, to to you know prepare a policies along with that not only uh, the uh, other organizations but also experiences on our organization if this xyz firm that i am having had had already had some kind of dos or ddos attack or some ransomware attack in my environment 
I'll need to set some policies based on that as well. So even this is important. Uh, this is this is more about the policies part. Uh, then coming to the uh, SOPs. So in the procedures, we'll need to create a use case management. We'll need to document the use cases that we want to achieve with SOC, the business critical use cases which, which we want to achieve from the SOC. It can be related to, you know, alert should be triggered related to uh, uh, DOS attack or if, if the user is been uh, not, uh, uh, if user is failing to log in for multiple times for uh, 20 times or 30 times in just one minute there must be a trigger that has been, uh, uh, there, there must be an alert to be triggered. So such use cases, you will need to, uh, you know, uh, write it down and define it in the SOPs. Again, uh, 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 set the SLAs. SLAs are very important, as I was saying in the previous slide. We need to, you know, set the reporting timelines. Uh, this MTTD and MTTR, mean time to detect and mean time to response is where, uh, the the major ob is what the major objective of a SOC is to achieve this MTTD and MTTR in 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 the even in the worst case worst case situations, MTTD mean time to detect means that how much time are we taking to detect an attack? It can be from the phase one. It can be from the uh, preliminary stages. Uh, this is this is the core function of a SOC. So we need to have the minimum MTTD uh, values. It usually is between uh, around, it, it, it depends from attack to attack, but it, it usually tends to uh, between, uh, if you are having a very mature SOC, it, it, it is around like, uh, one day of or 24 hours of MTTD. Uh, again, on depends on what kind of tools and strategy you're using. After detecting the attack, you also need to know how much time you're taking to respond it back, how much time you're taking to re revert it back or remediate it. That's where this MTTR values are specified. MTTR, mean time to respond, is where your analyst team, your IR team, and other SOC team will, you know, uh, other members from your SOC team will act upon those alerts and triggers and incidents. So this MTTD and MTTR are again another factor, another uh, important factor that you will need to look into when creating the SOP documents. Rule set preparation, like I was saying in the use case management, similar, similarly, we need to know if, if there are any kind of policies that are violating or that I, uh, that are uh, uh, obligating the customers or uh, I'll need to uh, define it as per my business use cases, I will need to mention it in my uh, rule sets that I will be preparing. Again, ingestion of logs from critical assets. There, there might that there should be a SOP document on how the uh, maybe your MSSP vendor or you will be onboarding your critical devices. It can be a process. It can be a procedure. It it can be a daily activity. But we will be pro, we will prefer a automated part. It should not be like manually ingesting the logs, but setting up some some kind of uh, tool in between that will automate this uh, ingestion of logs or onboarding of the critical devices. Then there is this response and remediation measures. This is again a critical SOP factor where if in case there is a, a, a attack is happening uh, in your or alert has been triggered in your environment and your SOC team is asking the firewall team to block some IP addresses or blacklisted IP addresses or malicious domains on your firewall. At the same time, the firewall is, you know, restricted or bounded to the permissions from the senior authorities or from the CISO teams. So the, the SOPs must have clear, uh, clear identification of the criticality of the, uh, of the alerts and of the uh, event. On the basis of that, even without intimidation of, or, or, you know, requiring any kind of access from the CISO, the IPs have been blocked or the blacklisted websites have been blocked. So, this response and remediation measures need to be uh, taken into consideration wh while creating the SOPs. And how this collaboration with different security teams will work. Uh, uh, let's say you are having a MSSP vendor for uh, your SOC. You are having uh, maybe uh, your in-house team for your firewall. You might be having different team for your applications. So how the collaboration will happen, who will be the single point of contact, who, who will be responsible or who will, who will be taking the ownership of all these things, you will also need to define it in the SOP document. Along with this two major uh, 
uh, chunk, this policies and SOPs, we also can enhance the SOC by the threat modeling structure. So the threat modeling structure is uh, a threat modeling document is to be prepared with all these policies and SO, uh, policies and uh, procedures in the place. And this procedures will be referred in case of, uh, you know, uh, any, any new IR team member is there or any kind of uh, new SOC and list is joining. This can also be a business case for, uh, for, for regulatory requirements. This, this threat, threat modeling uh, can also be helpful for your uh, 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 compliance requirements to fulfill. Also, you need to define some automation policies. Like I was saying in the collaboration part or in the response and remediation part, when we when we talk about you know the the firewall team needs to get an approval from your uh, uh, CISO or the management uh, or the senior management staff that there can we can set up some kind of automation policy if it is a critical alert it should directly get approved by the CISO uh, uh, CISO authorities and it should it should directly be uh, sent for the blocking part so so such kind of automation also we can think of validation and verification is again a, a ongoing process we will be creating uh, policies and sops from day one but this will this will improve on 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 regular basis after verifying if the policies are properly placed or not after verifying the sops are properly placed or not we will do some improvisation we will validate it and then again if required we will verify it and improve it so, so validation and verification is an ongoing cycle which is required by the SOC team to perform well. And uh, you must be aware about the system drills to make sure that things are working as expected. System drills are very necessary. So if, 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 if the things are in place, alerts will be triggered. Uh, the, the, the incidents will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you will get, a, get an alert related to the incidents that have been identified. So again, this three modules are, are the are uh, 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 these five or six points are to be taken care of uh, during the process uh, 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 in, in the process module. When we talk about the tools, we we mainly talk about the technologies that we are using. Uh, in SOC, we 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 classify it on four parts. It can be a prevention technology. It, uh, it can be on the basis of prevention. It can be on the basis of detection, analytics, or the response part. When we talk about prevention, it is, it is going to utilize, sorry, it is going to utilize most of your preventive tools like your endpoint protection, your NGAV, your uh, EDR, your DLP solution, NAC in place, and, and such kind of things. So if any new policies need to be created, uh, uh, on the uh, uh, so, so so prevention tools will help you you know uh, block that attack or block that incident on uh, based on its policies and signatures then the second approach or the second module in this technology is the detection approach uh, detection tools are going to help you identify the things in your network collecting the logs normalizing it and then uh, identifying it uh, the log management tool or the logger tools can be utilized. IDS tools can be utilized. Threat intel feeds can be utilized to identify or to, or, or to gather information in, in, uh, uh, from a particular uh, tool segment or an environment. After collecting it, after just detecting it, it's not the stop. So we need to analyze those things. We will need to correlate it and apply some analytics on it. So, so the SIM platform. Uh, this sim sandbox UBA that is user behavioral analysis platform will 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 be doing uh, the analytics based on uh, based on uh, the things that are identified. Even the correlation has been uh, done with the help of sim sandbox will do the analytics on the basis of the malware that is been identified. Latma, which is currently the latest recognition in uh, you know lateral movement uh, or the, the the term means lateral movement analyzer. So, which is the latest in the segment to identify if any kind of late, uh, lateral movements are happening in your environment based on the, uh, you know, uh, flow traffic. So, these analytic tools can be used to identify and which will actually correlate and give you the visibility. Then there are these response tools. Uh, I'm, I'm just having three of them as of uh, in this document, but it can be many. 
response tools include your SOAR platforms, your uh, ITSM tools, uh, your ticketing tools, your uh, uh, management, uh, uh, ticket management or such tools. So how you want to curate, how you want to, you know, uh, want the flow to be uh, uh, in the response segment will be, you know, in this response tools. These tools, uh, uh, these just the technologies you can evaluate or you can actually you you can use the best of the class tools in this segment as well now when when we talk about this ppt process ppt process has been utilized a ppt uh, model has been utilized by a lot of things it is morely uh, majorly utilized in cyber security world but now in the modern SOC, we are more focused on uh, i mean uh, apart uh, along with this ppt we are also focused on the business and the services cases. So in the business, we define what kind of charter you are having, what kind of business cases you are having. Uh, uh, let's say you are a banking firm and your banking firm needs to follow some guidelines or some regulatory, some government uh, norms. So for that, what kind of business cases you might be having that you will need to prepare. Along with that, any kind of, uh, you know, uh, customer demands are there any kind of your client demands are there that your that your data the data that you are storing for a client needs to be gdpr uh, compliant or need to be soc compliant or need to be uh, you know and need to be stored in the encrypted format these concerns are to be addressed in the business segment and this will also be taken care by uh, the modern soc the, this two features this business as well as the service part are again the strategy of a modern stock. Uh, when when I talk about the services part, previously the there was there was this vendor management tool, uh, vendor management platforms which used to take care of it. But now the services are uh, both in house and outsourced. To manage it very effectively, we we have mentioned it in the services part. In the services part, you will define what all SLAs. Are to be delivered by your uh, maybe your MSSP more, uh, MSSP or your uh, in-house teams. Your uh, if if you are onboarding MSSP as your service partner, you also need to know how your logs have been stored. Is it stored in the encrypted format? Is it stored in uh, the cloud environment? Is it stored on premise, or is it stored in uh, a hybrid way? All these things you will need to take care uh, when when you are defining the services model. Okay. Uh, I, I believe uh, any any questions or queries till now, I'm not sure. I'm not seeing the Q&A section as of now. But if you have any questions or queries, you can just uh, mention it in the Q&A session, uh, Q&A segment. Okay, uh, coming to the maturity model. Now, CMM is usually used in, you know, identifying uh, or, or uh, uh, checking the maturity of your, any of your application or your designs. For SOC, I am using this model, uh, which is which I have also I have also equivalented to uh, um, sorry to to the CMM model, uh, where each and every uh, segments, each and every uh, you know strategies are mapped. So when you are having uh, a PPT approach, when you are following this PPT approach, people, process, and technology tools you uh, and and you want to start with the sock you can start with an ad hoc architecture or or the initial stages as per the cmm equivalent model so you will start it with let's say monitoring your firewall and uh, ips and antivirus as we saw in the initial slides it was very chaotic it was having so many alerts and uh, the response was delayed and uh, the teams were trying to connect with one another but uh, there was this communication gaps there will be a lot of chaos but to start with this you can start with one number of uh, 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 personals one person will be managing your uh, uh, SOC environment to collect the logs check the events and alerts from the firewall and endpoint protection and ids and uh, other setups then you can move it or improve it to the next level that is uh, you know, a partly focused activity. Your SOC can be uh, enhanced from uh, one personal to an enhanced team, where the teams are actually engaged in correlating activities, where where they are actually uh, you know the process are pre properly developed. 
kind of of how how the cases are to be resolved or what kind of actionable steps are to be taken and and defining the slas and stuffs and then you can onboard some tools like uh, siem that is for analytics and uh, sandboxing again for analytics part this is going to be repeatable you will need to focus on this to move from the ad hoc to the maturing stage now this uh, maturing the the segment of the white segment that you see the uh, the full time uh, sock ir and the maturing stage is where your transition from your current sock l1 sock will happen from uh, 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 l1 sock to the l2 or l3 level of sock this is the transition uh, that is been stated so in the maturing uh, maturing state uh, we see uh, we we will we will want to uh, you know hire a team which is full time working in formal roles which is having dedicated uh, you know work and uh, activities to be doing on daily basis it they will be doing continuous monitoring so with the help of maybe uh, some some sim tool or some uh, 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 network monitoring tool network operations tool they will be doing it endpoint forensics is required you can actually onboard tools like edr xdr and such platforms and technical intelligence is required this uh, uh, in this phase in this stage you can actually define a lot of sops based on your business critical uh, event based on your business requirements so this can be done and then uh, from 2 to 5 personals from 2 to 5 formal role, roles you can uplift your uh, sock and list team to up to 10 number of users 10 number of employees 10 number of sock and list this upliftment will actually enhance your marvel malware analysis part threat hunting part and any kind of you know forensics that you want to do as well the process now is to be monitored on regular basis in metrics format it should not be just the hierarch hierarchical format or such also now when you are moving to this uh, manage uh, managed state your sock team can be achieve uh, can can achieve 24 by 7 operations with this 24 by 7 operations you are actually going to get visibility of the attacks even at, at, at day time or whenever your uh, business critical op operations are not functional and then going to the uh strategic stage where there are fusion of uh, you know sock team ir team threat hunting team and more than 15 employees can be deployed and multiple uh, multiple teams are there not just the employees not just a single uh, person who is responsible for each and every uh, attack or thing multiple things are there this will require you to you know uh, enhance your your sim from uh, a basic sim or a log collector to a uh, Uh, I, uh, AI or ML based sim platform, and you can uh, use this cognitive in, uh, cognitive tools to enhance the AI part. And this is where the stage you are, you are actually optimized. This this complete cycle can take. It, it depends again from business to business cases. If it is a, a a service provider, it can take up to like two to four years. and if it is a bank it might take up to 5 to 7 years and and so on it is again uh, calculated as per what kind of business critical operations are there i i guess i have a question just a minute there are multiple vendors or oems are offering soft facility what is the selection criteria okay great i'll 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 try to answer it in the session just 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 two minutes i will i will cover it in the f and uh, f and q uh fa fna section faq section sorry uh then there are this best practices and prerequisites that these are just a few of them that i i, I try to list it down when you want to onboard a sock you can actually look into a sock which is modular uh modular in in the sense you you should optim you should use the best of the tools which are working in silos but the sock should be you know in the modular format uh, you can use uh, a sock which is uh, integrating with all these uh, best of the class solutions we do not want to compete uh, with one another your tools should be modular enough and uh, they should be able to uh, uh, you know uh, complement one another rather than competing with one another 
so modular design is required first and foremost when you are planning to onboard uh, or or go ahead with the sop it is very much important to have a inventory list it can be your critical devices it devices non it devices whatever things even your byod devices and your uh, users or customers that are connecting to your network should be well noted you you need to have that uh, that is the first and foremost step of a security uh, or, or, or or the security practices to be followed your efficient output in your environment so defined architecture in this defined architecture you will need to have the strategy of uh, you know how you want to place the sop the sops uh, procedures policies must be well defined and it 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 will be an uh, it will work in an improvement you know but again it needs to be in a defined format okay uh, so this is what you can expect from sop uh, so a centralized visibility of what all security incidents are happening in your environment you will be able to see it in the same uh, uh, with the help of sock you will be have a visibility with with the sock uh, faster response mechanism now you with with sock you will be able to you know identify detect uh, an activity uh, or any any attack from the preliminary stage itself so if you are knowing it you can take the steps from day one or from the zero day type comprehensive security intelligence you are getting uh, the knowledge the logs the you, you are uh, as per your coverage you are actually getting information from al almost all the things in your environment so you are get, going to get you should get actually a comprehensive security intelligence from your sop improve uh, improvisation of your security controls you are having some policies some structure in your uh, uh, in your environment to improve your security controls so uh, to uh, uh, in your environment for security controls with the visibility you can actually improve it uh, um, uh, simplifying your ir incident response and forensics as you are already having the logs and data with your sock team your sock team is already having some some kind of uh, you know expertise in uh, analyzing those things they can uh, extract the data and simplify and you know uh, fast in the ir and forensic response now with improved security controls and faster response mechanism we are going to minimize the attack surface because the 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 control is taken on a very preliminary stage uh reduce your cyber security cost i am not saying that it is uh, this this sock people think as an add on tool which is going to uh, uh, burden their uh, you know commercials or 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 that segment but it is not that if you are utilizing a sock properly if you are utilizing your security tools properly it is going to give a good roi over the years and comply to the regulatory mandates if you are a bank in, in fact in any segment if you go in any industry that you go sock is going to uh, you know help you comply the regulations specifically for financial segments it can be your nfc firm it can be your broking firm it can be your uh, uh, banks sebi guidelines nif uh, nst cyber security framework also suggests that you need to have a sock okay so to to make sure your all these uh, you are you are taking the uh, sorry taking the best out of it you 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 can actually have this Uh, expectations from your sock okay uh covering to the frequently asked questions uh i see uh, uh mr chintan has asked there are multiple vendors and oems that are offering sock facility and what is the selection criteria for an organization so when you are aware about the functionalities of a sock that we discussed that i i just demonstrated in this presentation you know what to expect from a sock when you list down your expectations you you can list down your expectations in the form of uh, word or uh, excel file there might be five vendors but out of five only one or two might be able to you know uh, respond it back to or, or cover your expectations so this you can uh, this is how you can actually do second is poc is the best way you cannot identify the services you cannot uh, you know just uh, evaluate on the basis of presentation or the skill set that are demonstrated in just a webinar or a meeting or uh, uh, a zoom session 
so it's better to set up a poc for uh, for 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 evaluating evaluating your use cases and then uh, then you can uh, think for onboarding the soc team i i hope i answered it uh, i you you got what i want to say what sim soc solution do you use for monitoring and what pricing model do you follow uh, is it TPS based or how is it? I would recommend you, we, we if we connect it offline, we have our internal SOC team as well as we are uh, working with uh, or or we we provide MSSP services as well. So we can discuss this offline. Yeah. Um, and just a few, few, you know, understanding or, or the questions that I usually get when I'm uh, speaking to anyone related to the SOC. So is the SOC same as the NOC? Mm, kind of. Uh, when we talk about the SOC team, SOC is more focused on the security operations, security things, anything related to cybersecurity. NOC works in a similar way, but it is more focused on the operational part. It, it, it actually gives you, uh, uh, you know, insight on the uh, efficacy of the system, efficacy and your uptime of the system. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, and, and, and the uptime of your system. So NOC is more really responsible for your network operations part. SOC is more focused on the cybersecurity structure, your security posture part. There are organizations who you who have a single team for SOC and NOC, who have a combined team of SOC and NOC. They are more focused on the security part. They are not more focused on the uh, efficacy part, on the uh, bandwidth utilization and uh, such part but more focused, even the NOC team is more focused on the uh, security part. Uh, what skills and resources are required? Okay, so as we discussed in the previous slide, a team uh, to handle the security operations effectively, you it is, it is must to be you know deployed 24 by 7. An attacker will not say that, okay, I, I will only work in my business hours and the organization's business hours. So it is very much required or uh, or uh, important to have a focus of 24 by 7. But again, it is dependent on business factors, business cases, what kind of uh, industry you belong to and what kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, strategy you want to place. Do you need a SOC provider on an MSSP? Yeah. So this completely depends. If if you are a banking customer, if you are uh, in, in health segment, if you are in educational segment, manufacturing segment. And what kind of business case you are having based on that you will need to take a call on this an msp will will be will be able to provide you complete uh, you know package of sock it includes threat hunters your malware analyst from day one and when you onboard it uh, in house you will need a sock team your hardware resources your uh, your documents to be you know prepared from day one. What kind of policies? What kind of SO SOPs you want to prepare? This will be uh, uh, havoc if you go to deploy it in house from day one. But again, it's on case to case basis. I, I would I, if I would have been in in a bank or, uh, uh, or or such kind of industry manufacturing industry, I would have you know outsourced my SOC to an MSSP. Uh, difference between the threat hunting and incident response team. Uh, yeah, so threat hunting works proactively. Incident response teams are working after the incident happens. Threat hunting will identify any kind of uh, you know uh, uh, any kind of attacks that are going to happen. Any kind of systems that are prone to attacks. IR team will actually uh, you know troubleshoot or uh, will will be active only when the breach or an attack is happening. Uh, can we enhance the SOC with automation? Definitely, you can. You you should you utilize the tools of AI and ML uh, with with AI and ML. And again, the SOAR platforms and ITSM platforms that I was talking about, you can utilize your or you can enhance your SOC with this automation part. Can we use open source platform for socking uh, for setting up the SOC? You can. Uh, you can, as I was saying in the, uh, you know, maturity model slide from the initial stages, you can use uh, open source tool, tools like MISP, MSP, uh, ELK stack, Hype. You will need a dedicated uh, resource team 
dedicated uh, uh, analyst team and dedicated development team as well. This three, if they are working in uh, working in collaborative approach, you can go ahead and deploy it. Yeah, I guess I have another question. Can you give an example uh, of threat hunting use case and how will it be different? From, okay, I, I guess I answered it in uh, this previous. So when we talk about threat hunting, threat hunting is more of an approach. Let's say I am doing, uh, if there is any kind of, uh, you know, scanning, uh, scanning activity that is identified in my network. So my uh, threat hunter or, or the SOC team's threat hunter will actually uh, look for such activities. If, if there are a lot of uh, scanning activities going in the environment, and, and even if the uh, alerts are not triggered, this is the concern. There are a lot of cases where scanning activities are not being detected proactively. It can be scanning, it can be DOS, DDoS attack, it can be such kind of things. So threat hunters are, uh, those threat hunters can be in-house as well as they will be looking into the, uh, you know, activities that are uh, uh, outside of the organization. It can be uh, the, the activities uh, in, in similar kind of forms, in, in similar organizations in the same industry, or it can be uh, nationwide warfare attacks or cyber crimes or such. So, so threat hunters are usually active on all the places. And when we talk about incident response, incident response uh, will be active once the attack has been detected. If something has been detected, now the IR team will respond back, uh, respond back to it. Okay. Do you integrate all devices to the SOC or is it only standard set of devices? Um, basically, we recommend to integrate all the devices. This devices gives us a lot of insights and vis visibility in the network, in your environment, in your IT environment. It can be your IT as well as in your OT environment. So uh, uh, if an if a, if a, if a, if a organization is skeptical about you know, onboarding SOC, they can start with a set of more critical devices. It can be the backbone of, backbone of the system. It can be your firewall. It can be your uh, AD server and an email server and your antivirus servers. This, and your network device can be your switch or your router or your access point. So this is going to give you a lot of insight of what all things are happening. Uh, uh, insight. And when, when your perception about the SOC is clear, you can enhance further. You can upgrade or upscale your SOC teams to onboard other devices. It can be from uh, your... So, so, so when, you're, uh, when your spine is strong, you can actually, uh, you know, add on to other devices, uh, other critical devices, your web servers, your or, uh, database servers, your application servers, and so on. So this approach is usually usually suitable when, when we are uh, planning to onboard a SOC. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I am on time. Oh, okay, I, I took five minutes extra, but if any questions or any other queries, you can reach me out directly. How is your difficult is to integrate the devices? Uh, it, it depends on what kind of strategy we are using, what kind of uh, you know architecture we are using. It is a agentless architecture, agent-based architecture, and, and all those complex questions are there. This is usually uh, derived during the, eval uh, when, when this can be derived when you are evaluating a SOC solution, SOC or a SIM solution or a SOC uh, MSSP partner. This will be in your SOP, uh, SOPs and policies that we are defining. Okay, I, I hope I, I have cleared uh, many queries as well as uh, just a, a, a glimpse of how your SOC can, how you can enhance your SOC. And you can actually evaluate maybe uh, going towards a SOC, maybe deploying it in line, in-house, or you can go ahead with the MSSP part. Right, Dashil. So it was a good session, Dashil. Uh, it was more insightful. And uh, if we have like, you know, more questions, we can take up the questions or... Uh, yeah, I have... Think... Yeah. And if we have like, you know, if we have, you know, POCs to be conducted or... You know, if we want a demo to be, you know, line up, 
you can just you know get in touch with us and uh, we are you know able to give you the demo thank you thank you yeah, 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 actually, I agree. We, right. we can we can take the demos. Uh, again, it's it's not just about the demonstration part. I just wanted to give more a uh, glimpse and more idea on how uh, how uh, how the customers can actually build up a uh, sock. Correct, and correct. Yeah, and in, 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 in the starting, yeah, in the uh, you know while you know you preparing you know uh, preparing for a sock. If you have any questions, if you need any guidance, or if you have like you know queries to resolve we are here to you know help you so uh thank you all of you for joining this session and we encourage you to you know write us on info at the netlagindia.com in case if you have any questions you will get a recorded session of this uh after <laughs> after this webinar thank you for joining guys thank you